Talking to Steve, and he was he was on Zoom. So he's still there. Oh, okay. Yep. And Brian, we have we have Zoom user. And we have Steve. Okay. All right, Bob. All right, Bob. Okay. site has a GPS coordinate. Uh, if you want to go to a repeater site and see what's in that computer site or in that radio repeater site, you can do it using APRS. APRS. You're traveling down the highway, down the highway you, can, you, can, you can pump you can out, out your direction, your, direction your, speed, your speed, your GPS, your GPS coordinates, coordinates, and you set a time frame, three minutes, five minutes, minutes, five minutes, minutes, every, ten minutes every ten minutes, every ten minutes, minutes every whatever, whatever you want. Whatever you want. So that's another so that's application. Another application. We'll another one, we'll another one we use for the very limited, very limited fashion. And Kevin will talk, Kevin will talk about, about that about that yeah. toward the end. Is telemetry. It's telemetry. Okay. okay. We have telemetry. We have telemetry uh, uh, that's that used by the by the club, club cord, primarily, primarily on the site on the mountain, on mountain on the plateau, 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 plateau points. So that's so a data collection. You can see how our solar panels are working, how they're charging, how they're charging the batteries. Those are some of the limited things. There's one frequency, and that's 144.39. If you tune to that frequency and travel any place in North America, you will, via radio, uh, have somebody track you if you have that capability in your vehicle, or walking, or biking, or motorcycle, whatever. So that is a key frequency. It's simplex, okay, no tone, FM. So if you have any kind of handy talk to your radio, you're guaranteed to be able to hear this. And you may not be able to use the system depending on what, what other things you purchase for it. But, but that's the primary goal of this is uh, to report packets, okay, to a central location. The central location, believe it or not, is in Finland. The database, anything you send to this database gets catalog for two years. So if you want to go back and look at something, that capability is there. A lot of people may be paranoid about this too. If you don't want people to be able to track where you're going, I'm, don't worry about that. I have all my vehicles have it in. And anytime you want to see, type in K9, Google K9 MWM APRS and you, you'll come up and you can see where I'm, where I'm going. So it's, it's a very, um, Interesting database, well supported, ongoing software improvements, and um, we'll talk a little bit about how you can get access to that. <clears throat> Every, everything's, not, it's not a, a cheap system necessarily. It can be expensive if you're thinking about buying a new uh, dual band radio for your car. Now's the time to get into APRS, probably for not much more than $100, $150 over what you'd pay for a rig, okay, without it. So uh, at any rate, that's it. Uh, the person who, who set up the system, I'm going to cut this part short, otherwise we'll be here all afternoon, uh, is Bob Green of WT4ADR. And he and just he passed, passed away. away. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's, it's fall. Fall. So, so uh, uh, it's, 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 it's a big it's loss a big for lo ham radio he put up. He's responsible for many of the CubeSats that are up there now that use APRS and uh, other things. Uh, 20-year veteran of the Navy, and uh, 
you can see it's st you started in 1982. The first, some of the first meetings on packet radio took place in western part of the United States. Tapper, if you've heard of that, Tucson uh, packet uh, amateur radio system. Um, Tapper was instrumental in developing TNCs, terminal node controllers, analog to digital uh, information. And in the process of doing that, okay, um, Tapper sold kits. They had people in there that designed kits. You could buy kits from Tapper to build the first TNCs that you needed. And that's essentially what's needed to do APRS right now. So at any rate, that's a little bit on, uh, on Bob there. Sorry, I had to kind of cut that short. So the, the first thing you can do, it's free, and everybody wants to do it. Everybody should do it. APRS.fi. It's, it's amazing. You just type that in. If you type in AP, HTTP, so forth, or Google APRS.fi, it'll take you to their front page. The front page has a tremendous amount of information on it. Um, that's the way you'll use this system if you want to follow me. If you type in K9MWM-1, you'll see my weather station on my deck at home. If you type in two, three, four, five, um, my four vehicles each have it in. Oh, I, I don't have it in my Jeep. So three vehicles have it in there. And uh, it will tell you what's going on. So this is, this is what it looks like when you type in this front page. And I'm going to have to vary. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'll talk loud. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's happening here is this is a map. And here, uh, I thought that would show up better. That's not showing up very good. But uh, at any rate, here's a map I-72 here. Here's K9MWM-1. And uh, uh, this is K0ELK, I don't know if you know Christine and Tracy. Tracy has, has a system of uh, re repeaters around the uh, area here. Um, Burnt Mountain, um, you can see different symbols here. Here's Sunlight Peak, that's where our main data collection point is for APRS. So any place you operate in our area where you can hit any of, the re any of these nodes, uh, dot zero is has a collection point. You know, people say, well, I never heard dot zero. Okay, you won't hear it unless you use APRS. Chuck has N0 NHJ has, I'd say, a hundred of these sites around western Colorado and northern New Mexico, northern Arizona, and Utah. And he still maintains those sites. Every once in a while, they'll go down, and um, I don't know his system of doing things. Do you, do you know that, Kevin? Where's Kevin? Back there. He comes out every summer, that's all I know. Yeah, but it, it's amazing. So he's responsible for collection of keeping these nodes going all the time. And it, and it is amazing. So there's one up at Sunlight, there's one up at Anvil Point, there's one in Vail, you know, they're spread all over. Snowmass, most of the sites um, have an ARS. Attachment. attachment. So signals, so signals from wherever, from wherever you, are, you are, okay, okay. go go to sunlight, to sunlight, and from and sunlight. From sunlight um, um, yeah, I'll show you yeah, the slide. Slide. It goes, it goes to. Uh, uh, it's a little too complex with this map. Um, here's what you look if you entered in. Uh, if you enter in somebody's call sign, I saw this this. I saw a car coming up, I-70 here, and it was a call sign I never heard of, okay? And this guy's from Missouri, okay? So you can look it up, and you can see what's, what's going on, okay? If you look here, he's going 66 miles an hour, 41 degrees, so he's kind of going northeast. His elevation is 5,650 feet, and you will see him lay down a node a node, any of the red dots are nodes. If you click on the red dots with your mouse on, the, on your computer or laptop, you know, desktop, laptop, whatever you have, iPads, okay, it will show you that this signal went from here to here to here. So that's what you're looking at here. What he was doing was 
he was coming in, coming down the highway here, and he was hitting, probably is in the rifle area based on silt there. And so he was hitting sunlight, and that's where we do our data collection. Uh, data collection point. Um, the other, the other one is this is this is Christine. You can see her driving here. I think she's working when she does this, and I don't know who she works for right now. But she was going to Eagle, so you can see how she laid down those tracks. Some places you have no coverage, okay? Or you might have coverage if you're running 50 watts, but if you're running five to handy talkie, you won't have as much coverage. Susie and I have driven from here to Newfoundland. We've driven from here to Alaska, and there's coverage all the way. We're, we're re we have generally good coverage in our area because all those nodes Chuck has set up. But uh, I, it, it's absolutely amazing. Canada and Alaska are really good countries. People really lay it down because they, they really use it. They want to know where people are and what they're doing. And the people that travel there seem to use it also. Okay, so that's a, a good example of that. This is just another view of that. Okay, because we have Google capabilities, Google's doing the maps for this. Okay, if you look here, I, I typed in the node for my house, and you can see uh, obviously it's not this season that that picture was taken, but uh, you can look at that and you can scroll it around, see if I have cars parked in my driveway. Um, can, I don't know if you can see my house. My beam is right up there, okay? I can see it on this screen here, but I can't quite see it there. So you can, that's, that's one way you can look at things. Driving down the road a little further, you probably notice here, this is uh, Midland Avenue going up to Four Mile, okay? So that's that point right there. You can, you know, enlarge, contract, you can do any, anything you want to uh, look at your views, but it's pretty neat to do that. I was following my kids driving from Texas to, uh, to the Phil Philadelphia area, and when they arrived at uh, um, their destination, the person's mailbox was right in front of the house. So it, it's really, I, I guess in one way it can be scary, but in one way it's kind of neat too. My kids like to see where we are all the time because we're never home very much, so that's it. So the first thing you have to do, uh, that you should do, and this is quite simple, is you want to register with APRS.FI. Now the maps that you were looking at before this, those are free. They have nothing to do with cost at all, okay? APRS.FI gets you there. This registers you and it allows you to enter packets into that database in Finland, okay? So that's, that's the beauty of this, okay? You don't really have to do anything as long as you have a little TNC or a controller or a tracker, okay? You can put all your weather information on there. When I say you put your weather information on, you don't do anything. It hap everything happens automatically, okay? There's nothing you really have to do other than provide the equipment that will po put out those coordinates for you. Bob? Yep. Is this one-way communication only an one-way? I can see your information, but I can't send you anything. Is that correct? There, there, is, there is a way to communicate. Um, there, there is a way to communicate, but it's uh, within an area and between two stations that have that capability, okay? There's, there's kind of a variety of capability that you can have with systems and depending on how much money you spend. For $650, you get a, a, unbelievable information that you can send to people. You can communicate and things like that. For uh, buying a, a small tracker or a hockey puck GPS kind of thing for $25 to $50, okay, you're limited. You, don't, you can't do some of the things, okay? But it, it will at least pump out that information, but who sees it Okay, it is is a little more, and to communicate two ways is a little trickier, but but we'll show you that. So anyway, um, what I was going to say was, uh, when when you do this, okay, 
over here on this side, okay, all these, this is how you register right here. And uh, what you end up doing, let's see if I have a good way to do this. Um, okay, so you log into APRS where you see that full sheet on the right side. There's a black title called information and then user's guide. Okay, so if you look over here, here's the information and then the user's guide is down here. You hit user's guide. After you hit user's guide, that brings up that. What you have to do is you have to scan up a little bit, okay, on your system at home. And then it'll say sections and user account. And what you want to do is get a user account. And um, I'm going to post these slides, by the way, up so you don't, I, I, it's hard to read it and write down all the URLs and things you have to do. So that's your section part. Here's your user's guide up here. You, you want to sign up for an account, which is right here, creating a user account. So you just hit that, and it's pretty easy what you're going to fill in, okay? You fill in your uh, email address, and your email address is going to be tied to your call sign. And they verify that you're a ham and that kind of stuff. And then they'll send you, okay, so you have to get your, your name. What, what are the other things here? Your, uh, uh, password, they'll ask you a password, so you're tied through your call sign, email, and a password. And uh, then you put your name in the bottom, you say you're not a robot, as usual, unless you are. Um, and send that to them, and then they'll send you a confirming message back to that email address. Okay, so you can do that in, I don't think it takes much time at all. It's sometimes it may take a little time because I don't know what their process is, you know, for your name and address. I think they just look it up to make sure it corresponds in, in the FCC database. Okay, and then if you do that, you're all set to feed data into the system. And um, I'll show you some simpler ways to do that later too. Um, okay, so one of the things that I did right away, if you go to the back table there on the left side, you're gonna see pretty much uh, what I set up at home and brought here with me. That's how you do a weather station, okay? So with the weather station, what, you're gonna, what you need, okay, is uh, let's start out here with, uh, with this weather station. And I have the URLs for these weather stations with prices and things. Um, I paid $100 for mine. It's been running for 10 years nonstop. It's uh, pretty amazing. I've gone through two radios, though, because every five minutes, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, that is keyed up and keyed down, okay? So um, I think, think about that. But you don't have to have much. This is a 5-watt radio that I'm using, a 5-volt power supply. So you see this red line here going to this, and that's connected to the DB9 connector, and that's the power. So you need power for your radio. You need power for this tracker. You hook up your thing, set it outside, plug this DB, the other two wires in this DB9 connector already are attached here. You just plug it in, okay? You plug this into your tracker, and that's your input. So you need two wires, and two of, those, two of the wires are there. They're hooked up. You don't have to even figure that out. All you have to do is figure out which two you need for your power. And it may vary a little about depending on who, whose tracker you buy, okay? But um, they have the instructions in there. It's not too hard to figure out. Same thing with this cable. This cable has only, this, this is the analog to digital converter. So your analog signal, okay, is coming from that box up there, and you can look at the one there. Uh, you mount your wind direction on one. There's a built-in thermistor, okay? So you have, on mine, I only monitor three things. I monitor wind speed, wind direction, and temperature. And you set this up, you plug all this in. You don't do anything else, okay? You need a little software that you, the, these people tell you how to download the software for the tracker. So you do that, and then once you plug it in, 
you don't do anything it's that sit, sit back and watch that other screen and you'll see your your whatever your temperature is your wind direction every five minutes okay it'll build a nice little chart for you in two different ways um, you know there's just nothing to it okay in terms of of uh, complexity it's easy to do this like I said this was about a hundred dollars these vary from about forty dollars to sixty dollars um, any kind of old radio if you got an old radio mine well here I'll show you this this is this sits in my garage okay it's right next to the the wall and that's exactly how it is it's been that way for 10 years the only thing I've ever done is plug it and unplug it to reset it and I've probably done that a dozen times in 10 years okay it's un just unbelievable reliability and my garage is not insulated or heated or anything like that and another thing it does this little board that I have does is there's a thermistor on the board and the thermistor gives you the temperature about every 20 minutes a packet will go out so you can look at the data you can look at your raw data and in that raw data it will give the temperature about every 20 minutes to uh, see what's happening so this is kind of this this wire here is going to my uh, outdoor weather station that's where it sits right there okay and uh, sometimes the wind direction or the anemometer on top if it snows heavy you know you have to go out and brush it off <laughs> so, so it works but uh, that's that's only in the winter other than that it uh, it's very reliable um, it probably um, doesn't, probably doesn't, doesn't the, the weather, the weather like the guy stand works fine. Fine. Works fine. You see this cable coming into the garage so that's coming in here so this is the analog this is uh, the tracker and this is the digital output that goes to the radio two wires for the signal going to the radio this does all your timing you set up your call sign in there um, whatever other variables they they do ask for uh, but you need your call sign because it's creating a packet that's going to be sent then this packet to give you some idea so that my packets from here I have a um, over here on the side I have a um, a handy cart pushing thing and I have a mag mount antenna on that and that's in the garage and this has worked really fine so it goes from here uh, usually the sunlight once in a while when you were talking about transmitting and receiving things got to remember this can clash you can have overlapping data which doesn't get through so if you set something up for every five minutes it looks to see if there's a signal there if it doesn't see a signal what happens is it won't transmit if it sees a signal excuse me if it sees a signal it won't transmit it'll wait when it doesn't see a signal then it'll pump yours out but you know that's just you got in a big city you have hundreds thousands of these and you're competing on one frequency uh, out here it's not really a problem you usually get your packets through and it varies between rural and city areas um, yep I don't, I but don't, I'll, show but you. I'll show you one. Okay. Okay. There's one in one of the It's, uh, it's trying to think. It, it's it's called a dumping rain gauge, right. and I I, I uh, the, do not have one hooked up. Is really, uh, I, mean, I know these things exist, and I know how they work, but it sounds like you got to do a little uh, intervention yourself, like when to dump it. Oh no. Yeah. What it does is it just um, like a seesaw. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as it as soon as it gets enough, it's actually, it's actually just a little contact worker. So when it pulls up, it does that. So what happens? What happens? Uh, it's covered. Uh, it's covered. Oh, it's oh, it's 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 registered. Registered. Okay. Uh, that's 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 that's
Oh, I see what you're saying. So, so, so anyway, so what you're saying here is, here is uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the company the that makes that weather station, <clears throat> uh, okay, like you see back there, uh, you can buy that rain or the rain gauge for it too. And you can also buy, uh, if you want to have a barometric reading, okay. Some people report this to the National Weather Service kind of thing or to, uh, can't think, what's the other radio service that uh, hams use and so other people. CW, OP, whatever else that is. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a, people pick up your signal and use it regardless of the quality. They'll tell you the quality of your signal, but um, that, that's there. So anyway, this, this is one of the primary things you can do. You can, you can handle anything you want back there and try that out. And uh, on the right side of that, I have my um, a later model, the latest model in, in data collection over there. So. Hey, Bob, quick question. Yep. We have some amount of ferret feeds there, so yep. did you yep. have RFI issues with the tracker or with SR? They, they the actually, uh, this is so long ago that I did this, I, I did notice them there and here, okay, and um, my guess is when I set it up, they send you some beads when you set it up and tell you to install them on the input and output. Using five watts like I'm using here, you can look at this, that my dial doesn't even work. This is 144.39, okay, and a bunch of the little pixels are, are not working anymore. But I mean, it's uh, five watts, I don't think you could probably need them, but if you have a 20 or 30 watt rig or something higher power that you use, you can kick it down pretty low because you know sunlight is a great site to pick things up. And even if you think about dot zero from my house, Okay, that's, I'm blocked by the adventure park, essentially. And I do get packets into there or to Anvil points directly. I have a good shot to Anvil, but still blocking things. But yeah, ferrite for RF, if you have a problem. And I don't remember if they included those or not, but I had a bunch of those laying around. Any other questions so far? So I, the, the brand of that weather station is a Dallas Summit. It's a one wire system. Do they still make those? Or? You can no, look. I've, yes. I've heard they stop making them. That's the reason I'm asking. Somebody makes them. Okay. okay. And I think I have the sheet in there. Uh, I think Argent Data System still makes them. Okay. They have a, and they have that tipping rain gauge there too. Okay. So that's there. And then, and then there's, I put two different trackers in there. Um, the Argent Data is only 40 bucks and the other one's 60 bucks, but still. That's, that's about what you have to pay to do a weather station. Um, to me, this is, uh, in a sense, it's kind of boring, but I can always know what the weather's like at my house. And you can look at, you know, 30 days of weather, five days of weather. All you do is click on the software that they have developed for that, and I'll show you that in a second. So that's that, okay? So this is, this is uh, some of that stuff that you're asking about. So here, this is the system, the, the company that makes it, Argent still makes it. So they have rain gauge and they have this wind sensor assembly. The thing that I was kind of surprised at and I would ask if you buy any of the, this stuff is make sure they have that embedded temperature sensor. I think they all have that, but I, you, you want to ask because they don't mention that here. Okay, but I mean, that's such a trivial thing to include. And then when you buy that, this is all one wire stuff, I'm sure. Um, okay, this is, that's the open tracker, and you see that, that's the one that I have sitting on a table over there. And again, you have to be smart enough to, uh, you know, download software, but if you downloaded software before and transferred it over, you know, it's, the instructions are really trivial. And they all, they continue to provide the software at, at their website, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, uh, here you see other things, and I've never tried these, okay? Uh, I've never tried the USB bundle, uh, the, the shield there for, for an Arduino. Um, you can do that. 
but you probably, if you go to these sites and click on these things, they'll show you how to do the things. I, I haven't, have never built a Arduino kind of interface. And I didn't see a strawberry or raspberry pie here. Uh, T3, that's a ni another micro tracker. Okay, Kevin, you wanna talk about this? Tell what it is and where you got it from. Yeah. It's a tracker and a radio, radio built in with a little box. Where'd you buy it? Where'd you buy it? Where'd you buy it? Uh, the, guy, the guy in Poland is in Texas. It's actually, actually Jeff from Poland. So, he, so he, yeah, in your yeah, handout, you have, have, have this. Um, uh, I, believe. I believe. If not, if not, if not see me or go to or go to, go to or, 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 or page. page. Yeah. Look at this. this. Now, this, now is this is Bionics. Okay. 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 Um, Bill, um, Bill, K0, K0, uh, uh, N0, M0, 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 Aspen, Aspen uh, has uh, this micro tractor. You put it in a little box and in an ammo can kind of thing. And he carries that around in his car, so it's uh, it's kind of neat to have that, you know, with you because you can obviously transmit in the car. Um, and this this company, Bionics, has uh, many other devices and bits and pieces, uh, hardware, software, and stuff too. So that's. That's kind of my hardware presentation. So any questions about that? So now we're gonna move to, uh, to the software. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with packets, okay, this is what you look like. You can just hit a key on your keyboard when you're doing, on your, da on your screen when you're doing this, and this will give you the raw data when you're in APRS. Um, so that's, those are my packets that I'm sending out for weather. And you can see some of the whoops. You can see some of the longer ones. Um, uh, you can see my call sign up here. This is where I was telling you that's a packet that uh, that was the the out the indoor temperature there. And it comes out about it like I said every 20 minutes. Okay, so that's the weather station packets. The second category of packets, okay, rather than fixed objects, are are moving objects. And so you can see the format for this is different. So essentially what you're doing is, this is the data stream you're pumping out to Finland, okay? I'm not knowledgeable on what every field means. I can see some things that I know and some things I don't know. But you, know, you don't have to understand any of this, but there is a difference between putting out a station, uh, a packet from a weather station, okay, to a moving vehicle kind of concept. And a tracker knows which one it is. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, we're, uh, Kevin sent me this slide because um, I wasn't sure how the packets moved. Everything I saw on a higher level was the data collection point was at sunlight, okay? Well, I know there's no internet at sunlight, okay? <laughs> huh? Yes, there is. Well, I can't access it, <laughs> but I'll tell them about it. So anyway, that this area here, this is sunlight. This is a data collection system for packets. And this goes, and uh, you guys can correct me if I'm right or wrong. This goes on our three point three gigahertz link, okay, to um, Anvil Points, and from Anvil Points to Dave's house. Is that right? Okay. And Dave supplies uh, APRS.fi with, uh, with that data via the internet. So that will, I think, in the future be carried Will it be carried probably by our five gigahertz thing when we change it well, over? I'm gonna suggest that Chuck go back a step and relocate that that uh, Zendo seven computer down, <laughs> down into the valley. Okay. Okay. Find another post for it. I keep posting it on his house. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so that's, so that's, that's for the that's future, future, but it, it's kind of interesting. So, so if, uh, if, uh, if, you, if, if you, somebody's driving past rifle, okay, Anvil Points will pick up that's, that packet from there. We'll go from there to sunlight, and then from sunlight, it goes back on the 3.3 gigahertz, mega gigahertz, back up to Anvil Points and down to Dave's house. And then to the internet, to Finland. Okay, so it's a little strange, but it, it works very well and very timely. That you know, it's probably a second, maybe. Yeah, so it's not a big deal. Um, any other comments on this part from Eric or Kevin? Well, at, at least this one's heated. <laughs> the buildings, you know, I, I was thinking if that were over at, what's the temperature run at Anvil at night? Uh, we don't monitor that. <laughs> <you know. laughs> okay, so anyway, that's, that's part of the, of, of the collection system there um, that I didn't know about until a couple of days ago because I couldn't figure out what it is. Okay, so, so now this is, these are some of the, if you're, Looking at my weather station on APRS.FI, okay, this is what you're gonna see, okay? And you can see um, the top one is uh, temperature, and you may say, well, what happened here, okay? Well, what happened here was I had a, a glitch in my system, okay? And uh, here I had another glitch. This was a while back, and this is when I had some temperature problems. We had freezing rain, six inches of snow, and my weather station didn't work properly here, but it started up by itself again and took off when I poured a bucket of hot water on top of the anemometer. Uh, let's see, okay, so this is wind direction. Okay, actually this looks pretty good right now, but I, I don't have it on the screen. And uh, wind speed up here, and the purple is the peak speed for a five minute period, because that's what I collect over, and it averages over. And then the blue one is, is, uh, is uh, the average. Uh, yep. Uh, You can see that uh, I, I collect nothing down here for, for rain, for, for uh, water measurements. Um, uh, there, there's another way to look at this, and this is what I look at at home. If you do, if you key in canine mic whiskey mic dash one, like you see up here, you'll get this view. And it, it's definitely a little different. And this is the last three days. And here's where I have my little glitch working, but you can come up here and you can do the last 12 hours, last few days, you know, whatever you want. This is the direction, so you can tell at my house the wind direction is all over the place. Here's where it froze at night twice, okay, and then the, this is harder to read on this slide, but this is the peak wind and then the average wind for every five minutes. And uh, you can go back and look at data so you can come back here and, and these are the things you can view using this, okay? You can look at your raw data and that's the data we saw before when I said the packets were different between weather and moving data. Um, you can change your units and there's all kinds of things you can do. I think this is the National Weather Service. Uh, that's raw APRS. There, there's some more varieties of, of looking at the data there too. Um, uh, th this is, Kevin, why don't you talk about the telemetry? Well, the uh, DC voltage, the voltage of the natural points and spread, the spread across about two or three days there and you see when the sun comes up and then it goes down. <laughs> the 
thing that Kevin thing told me Kevin today told was, me today was I, I was starting, I was to, starting worry to worry about, about the voltage here, which is about 11 volts. But Kevin assured me that it was one degree off. Yes, one volt off. One volt off, rather, yeah. Uh, so what you're seeing there is 11 volts, it's actually 12. 12 volts. So Anvil so Plants is still doing still really, doing well. really well. well. Nobody's been so up there in a couple of years. years. Once, Once Ken and Ken. Betty came up and Dave came up and uh, AD0LI came up and Susie and I and we cleaned enough brush out so we could get our vehicles in and assembled the solar panels up there. If you, if you haven't seen that, I did a little show on that once, probably right when we did it a couple of years ago. And you, you can see what our solar charge controller does. It's got yeah. intelligence built into it where when the sun comes up in the morning, it takes it up to a, uh, uh, what's called a, a bolt charge uh, voltage level. This would be like 14 and a half volts. And it uh, bolt charges those batteries for a small amount of time and then it takes it back down to a float charge. And yours is doing the same thing, Clark. But it, it's got three levels of charge in it. So then when the sun disappears, then you're just running off the batteries. We didn't, yeah. Uh a little bit of charge coming in even on a cloudy day but uh, typically you won't see this big uh, charge cycle here it'll just kind of ramp up a little bit and then just kind of float along just drop it off cool. but we have I don't know how many ampere hours of batteries up there it's 450 or uh, it's, uh, it's a lot like 600 amperes 600 amperes, amperes yeah for what we run. For yeah. what we transmit. Yes. Yeah. We can go days and days. Any questions about that? Obviously, then the advantage of doing something like this with APRS is the fact that you can do it remotely. Again, with a fixed object. Well, the other thing about that, too, is it doesn't really have to have the internet. If you have a radio that can receive that, you yeah. know, just a, a TMC, you can be anywhere and know that, you know, get a good good idea of what's going on with the, with the repeaters and everything. So, you know, it, it's just a lot more convenient to use the internet. But, you know, if you have a, I've got a bunch of different ways to receive APRS and um, none of which are really expensive at all. I mean, they're, they're all pretty cheap. Well, some of them are really expensive. You buy the Kenwood solution. <laughs> They're real expensive. Which is over there. Yeah, okay, we'll go to that. So I'll let you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there there are uh, there are cheaper ways, and we'll talk about that too. So the the D seven hundred came out, okay, and that was the first one I bought twelve years ago or something like that, and it did not have it had the tracker built in and TNC stuff, but it did not have a GPS attached. So this is what I run in my U my old Yukon, okay? So I bought an, I ha actually I had a couple of these, these uh, E-Trex from Garmin. These are, I don't know, 20 years old, something like that. But they're, I'll show you their capabilities in a second. And when I did this slideshow, I have, the new one, the 710 rather than the 700, and that has the built-in GPS. But I was thinking how much neater it is to have something you can visually see, whereas you start looking at this screen and their little, uh, for instance, I'll show you a compass in a second, but their little compass is about a half inch in diameter there and telling whether it's north, south, east, or west is not an easy thing to do while you're driving. The other thing that occurred to me is there's a lot of interaction when you have a GPS system, a, you know, you're tracking things and looking at things when you're driving. And that scared the heck out of me. Because <laughs> you can, you can, even though I, what I, one thing I learned is always mount it up here. 
legal or illegal, I don't really know. Because you drive across states, there's many states you're not allowed to do anything, okay? You can't touch this, anything here, if you're in California, okay? So you can't change screens, you can't do anything. Uh, you can't pick up your microphone. So uh, it, it, it's interesting, that kind of scared me when I thought about the things that I do do. So I mount everything on, uh, on the dashboard because I don't have to look down. Looking down and driving is, is scary, really scary. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'll show you um, what, what this, this is a 25 to 35 dollars I bought. I, I have four or five of these now um, for just for fun. And uh, they're, they're 25 dollars a piece on, on oh, Amazon, eBay. eBay, yeah. So, you know, you can buy it. The disadvantage here is it's a GPS, two AA batteries, okay, run this, and you learn to turn it off if you're not in the car because it'll work for about 30 hours, okay? 24 to 30 hours, and that's it. Then you gotta put in some new batteries. But it, it works neat, and um, this tells you which satellites, okay, visually, that's kinda cool, where those satellites are, and the strength of the satellites here, and here's your GPS coordinate, okay? So the next one um, is, is essentially the same thing. Uh, there's a map, there's my K9, Mike Whiskey, Mike Dash One weather station on that map. The, whoops, let's go there. That's the compass that I'm talking about. So you can really, you can read that compass pretty easily by just glancing over to know what you're doing. Um, here's your elevation screen. So it tells you your elevation screen. You can throw one of these in your backpack and it's so much fun to have it to see where you hiked and what you did. Okay, so there's, there's your trip odometer, the speed you're hiking at. If you're hiking at 2.2 miles an hour, you know it, or going 85 miles an hour in Utah down the interstate. Um, you can change these to and put more characters in them and they can change the character size. It keeps track of your, if you're hiking, your moving time, the time you've stopped, things like that, um, which is pretty nice. Um, this, is, this is essentially a, on the upper left-hand corner, you can mark a coordinate point from where, where you're standing, what it is. You can find any coordinate by going in and looking by area or by distance from it, okay? Um, there are routes and tracks. A route is something that you enter in, okay? And if you're gonna do a three mile hike, you can put in a three mile hike or you can put in Los Angeles, California. Um, a track is something that you record. You can take a track where you hike someplace and transfer that data over to a map, okay? To GPS, to a topo map. Um, the setup stuff, I don't know if I showed some of those here, things here. And there's accessories, that's where you set the time and do a lot of the uh, rudimentary work that you need to, to operate. Okay, so it shows you the, the moon and the sun. Important thing here, right here is the most important thing, hunting and fishing. <laughs> so, uh, I've never done that, okay? I have topo maps to all the places that I go, so uh, I mean, in my computer, so you can just transfer so it to there too. So you can take the track and, and, and project that on the topo map? Yeah. A lot of sensors involved in this one. Yeah, yeah, you need, you need the cable to do that, but it's there. Um, the calculator, there's also things. I, I'm, I'm not into uh, cliff jumping or anything or jumping out of an airplane, parachuting. But a lot of, I know several people who do, and um, 
and I don't know what that does, to be honest with you. But there are other there are other things on here. So here's a, here's a spot. This is my coordinate for my house, and if I wanted to do a go to, okay, um, it wouldn't make much sense because I'm there. But uh, you can do that, and if you can hit map, it'll bring up a map like the one I showed you before with the with the um, K9MWM-1 on it, and you can uh, uh, go any place or between two places, and it will map things out for you. Unfortunately, it depends on what kind of maps you have stored in. You can buy topo maps for it if you want to do that in your, uh, but this is kind of a small screen to do that too. Okay, and this is where you set your time, your units, your display, bright, dark, you know, your heading, uh, your system and your interface. Now, this this is the interface you use to connect it to the radio. Okay, so this is essentially what generates your GPS coordinates. Okay, and feeds it in your speed, wind, your direction, and stuff like that. So you set that up in this interface. And let's see, do I have anything else here? Okay, I do. So that's that's roughly the way you do it on on the 700 you can get a 700 i think for 450 to 500 dollars right now and you have to buy an e-trex or something to generate the thing the uh, coordinates for you well the latest and greatest is um, the uh, kenwood okay 710 and that's what it looks like it doesn't look like it's not much different the software is virtually the same I know it's different because it, now it has to deal with the uh, uh, built-in signal somehow, but it works really well. And you can do a lot of things here that you can't do either by looking at the data on APRS.FI and uh, other things. Um, just This is just for your reference. Um, these are, you notice ICOM has nothing that has a built-in TNC, okay? that I'm aware of. At one point, I thought they did, but um, I couldn't find that. I thought they had one radio at one point, they, they did that. So these are the systems, and if you look, like Bob Cutter's using uh, Yezu, uh, let's see, what's he using? Uh, the 300D, okay? And that has, has it built in, and it also has the uh, digital radio system uh, if you want to use Andre and uh, Al's repeater up there um, on sunlight also. So these are things you can look for used on eBay if you want to get them. I also had at one point, I had a THD7 and I, I just loaned it out to people and I had an E-Trex hooked up to it. It's a handy talkie, built in TNC, but no GPS. And, and Bill Brown was going to do some missionary work down in northern Mexico with his church and I gave him that so he could put it in his car and he could see where his car was if somebody ran off with it or his trailer and things like that. So, um, and I just gave this to people to use to get a feel for it because um, it's simple. Just lay it down on the dashboard of the car and it pumps out, you know, your, your coordinates that go into the database. So uh, that's, that's another way that you can do it. These, these, I don't know what these go for. You're probably looking at 150 today, 125 maybe, something like that. Okay, the, these are some of the newer ones. Now you're looking at $600 for that, that. And does this then the wife, the uh, D74? What about? The D7, the so, yeah. Kenwood D74 is no longer being manufactured. They, they have a new one, I forgot what the model is. Yeah. Okay, because they yeah. were going in January, the prices just shot way up. Yeah. Um, and I was like, really? Because they were expensive <laughs> before. <laughs> so th this gets you into the uh, Yezu DMR digital mobile radio stuff, and, and it has an a, uh, APRS built in totally. And this is the one, I got a couple of these, and um, they were 650 the last time. I don't even know if you can get this stuff. I was, I'm going to let Frank talk in a little bit here. Um, but uh, he is telling me, tell him, tell him about Radio Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi. Pardon? Did you hear enough? 
raspberry pies. No, just the buying one. How long? Check all the standard sources for them. They they're giving ship dates of hmm. not before 2023. Prices change. Do you know? Pardon? Prices. prices. Where the prices go? Um, the prices went up to forty five dollars, but it's kind of immaterial. Yeah. yeah. I think if you, if you go on eBay, they're higher than that. Yeah. It's like yeah. used cars. Yeah, my, my son-in-law was selling graphic, old graphics boards that he was going to throw away for double what he paid for them <laughs> on eBay. You can't buy graphics cards either. It's very difficult. Anyway, uh, th this is what, it, what I use. Um, this is a little bit on how you program it, just to give you some flavor. That, that's what you're, you're looking at. You can see on the left side, call, VFO, memory. Uh, along the bottom, the bottom line where it says key there, uh, there's three different systems. If you keep hitting the button on the left, you'll get the three levels of different kinds of programming. This first one I have set up is um, you can send out a message when we were talking about that, okay? Uh, the other things you can do is list. When you hit the list button, I'll show you how that works. It collects all the packets that it's heard and saves them up to 100 of them. And if it gets a, 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 a hundred of them, then it's, you know, last in, first out kind of thing. Um, first in, last out, that's what it goes. Um, but you do have message capability. Uh, the beacon thing is where you turn on your beacon or you're turning off your beacon. If you look in the top right-hand corner, you'll see it says beacon APRS if it's, or a GPS, it, what it's gonna do, it's gonna flash on the GPS, it'll start flashing once it's received the coordinates. It uses the same antenna for receiving as it does for transmitting, okay? So I have five ace mag mounts or, or permanent mount antennas. It's gonna, that's, that's what it's gonna be using. So you don't need a separate antenna for the GPS that's built in uh, for these units. Um, you can see the TNC in the bottom right side there, and uh, uh, position and, and other things. And you know, uh, if you ever buy one, you'll, you'll have to go through this. By the way, it's it's uh, almost a 200-page manual that comes with this. Okay, so it's probably not something you're going to read through when you want to do something. You read about it and try it. <coughs> um, Here's another one. This is for programming your uh, your repeaters or repeaters. So you got the tone, reverse, low, high, medium, power, things like that. And the same things on the right and the left. Um, if you want to mark a coordinate place, you can't see the screen at all. You can't. <laughs> so is, is that a little better? Okay, so that's that's how you go in and you, you program the audio, receive transmit information, see what you have in memory, ETMF, your tone system, repeaters, GPSs, APRS, Sky Command. One of the, the interesting features with uh, Kenwood is I, I have a Kenwood 2000 also, and you can use Sky Command to control your 2000, okay, HF radio, okay, with Sky Command, or you can have the, um, 
the D74 that you looked on. D74. Yeah, the 70. I had a 72, and I could program the 2000 with that also. So, okay, so let's go through this. Okay, okay. So this is just information. There's when you look at that map. Okay, can you? S is there anything there now or not? Can you read that? No. Little tiny bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's forget about it. How, can you just read that? That's that's the list function. So what I did was, if you, you can't see this, I'll tell you what I'm, I'm looking at. Okay, the third item on there. This is a list. It says, it says 147.150 plus C, and then next to that it says 106, 1006, and it says object. So I'm looking at that in a list. So I have a hundred different things I can look at. They may be moving. They may be objects that are stationary. Okay, so 147.15, okay, is our repeater up at Anvil Points. Um, if I click on that number three there, okay, that brings up the frequency again, okay, and it says an object at Anvil Points, uh, the tone is 107.2, um, I don't know what R30M means, what net means, and, uh, oh, I do know what the net means. It means we have a net at 8.30 Sunday evening, okay? That's what it says. And then on the right side of that is a tiny, yeah. there's a compass there that's about a half inch in diameter that points due west, okay? So I did this for my house, so the, re the uh, anvil's due west from my house, and it says it's 33.2 miles. So that's, that's interesting information, obviously, as, as the bird flies. Then the next thing it brings up is, it says it's an object. Uh, the date is 3-8. Again, they have the 33.2 miles in the compass and stuff. And then there's speed miles per hour, obviously zero, because it's an object, right? And it doesn't have the altitude there. I don't know if Chuck chose not to do that or what. Yeah, yeah okay. So. The next thing is, on the left side, there's the coordinates, okay, for that site. There's Delta Mike 69 AM, that tells you which grid square it's in, and it repeats the 33.2 uh, miles in the compass on the right side, so that was a few times. Okay, so that's, that's looking at objects, and there's tons of objects, okay? So I was, the day I was looking at this, I came into here, you can't see this probably, Okay, so n item number 19 in this was AC0UZ, so that's Gary, dash seven. He goes back and forth to work from rifle every day, okay? So this was uh, 547, and uh, if I hit his call, it comes up, and it says, he mon it says monitoring 146.52. So if you wanna talk to him, go over to 52 and you can talk to him. Um, it again has the compass and and uh, direction he's south of me, so that means he's almost home, okay? And uh, underneath it, it says four miles at uh, three degrees on the compass, so uh, that's it. Next thing, it says he's going 12 miles an hour, so he must be pulling into his driveway. <laughs> and uh, it has all, all the uh, other information. And the last page on, on Gary is, uh, his coordinates, he's in Delta Mike 96IN, and you have the compass and all that kind of stuff. And this is a message thing, can you see that or not? No. no. Okay, it says message, and it's, I'm sending it to, to AC0UZ-7, and I put in, hi Gary, what's going on, and send it to him, okay? Did he answer? I didn't really send it because oh, <laughs> I, by the time I, had him, he was 19th on the list, so I knew he was inside the house already. Um, okay, so this is toward the end here, and uh, do you have your cell phone? Okay, so read that, okay? So for 10 bucks, approximately, I don't know, I, ca I, I can't register again, because I've registered, you can buy an app, either for a droid or for your iPhone. And this is what my kids do. I like to see when they drive up from Texas, I worry about them, okay? 
So they take their, I, they, they have that $10 app. They're both hams, okay, my daughter-in-law and son. And what you do is you can go in, buy that app, and that app triangulates on cell towers, creates a GPS coordinate that's pretty smart, and if it's close to highway, it puts you on the highway. It's smart enough to do that. And uh, you can see them moving along just like anybody else. No radio involved. Just, you have to have cell phone coverage. Going up to sunlight, um, I'll set this up when I, when I come. Uh, going up to sunlight, what I discovered is, you can tell the cell coverage. You can see where, boom, I lost it. Then there's a straight line for eight miles, or seven miles, six miles, whatever it is. Boom, there's a point where I'm getting an elevation and I, it picks me up again. But that by Dead Man's Curve and the Diamond um, Ranch there, there is, there is no cell phone coverage. Um, anyway, so what you do is, you can, and you can use this app on your screen. You can, that's APRS.FI. That works obviously on your cell phone too, if you have cell phone, if you have cell phone or internet coverage. Okay, and then this is the program which you can't see, but come up here and look. I'm, I'm essentially done now. It tells you how often you want to pump out a coordinate, okay, and when to start, and it'll tell how, how long it was since you put out your last coordinate, and uh, you, you're set online. I mean, this is nothing at all to do this. It's, uh, it's a trivial app. So you can come up here and look. Yeah. So that's it, guys. Wow, <laughs> nicely done. The, the other thing that this does, and I didn't have a good way to get a picture of it, is if I'm traveling up the highway and I go to this list function, okay, or I can just leave that running, and that's more fun looking at, okay, than, than whatever, than the frequencies. And if you use that list function, you can see any time there's, there's a moving object, it'll tell you the, the call sign, okay? Uh, Chuck's put in and um, Kevin have put in our identification for our repeaters, so it tells you the repeater site if you're watching this, when you're coming up on it. And on that system, you can just hit a button and it'll go to that repeater. So if you're traveling in an unknown area, see a repeater that's close, pop the button, and you're on the repeater. So, and like I said, the manual's 100, 150, 200 pages, I don't know what it is. Um, it does a lot of neat things like that, but still kind of a no-no in terms of, you know, you can get away with a lot in Colorado, but you don't want to do that in California. <coughs> you don't want to ever get caught with your hand on the line. Is there, is there a preference to, I'm looking at the um, droid APR, or, uh, you know, the droid, um, trying to say store yeah and I see three or four different APRS apps on here is there a it should be done not FI uh, <coughs> you have that I see APRS droid that's actually it for the droid APRS tracker watch APRS no those no it's probably the first one and and it was Google FI yeah Google FI is what you want You're down to one cell, cell tower, though, that won't work, right? No, no. Well, it's okay for highways, maybe. It, it's it's no, no good downtown for AT&T users, right? It's plenty of street. Google i Fi does not have good ratings. What's the, the state of price? I think the last time we set it up it was that. But you can go around and look over there. I'll uh, go over there if you want to ask questions about the weather station or you can run the radio there, just do what you want on it. And while Kevin does that, Frank, do you want to do your show and tell? Sure. So I got two devices here I'll, I'll pass around. Um, this first one 
is a um, little TNC that you can hook into any radio, actually. I've got it on a boat and It's actually transmitting right now. Um, and it seems to be registering. But um, that's, that's kind of cool. You can just put that on any any radio. They make different interface cables and so forth for it. The other one is a... Is there uh, somebody trying to get in there? Let me turn it on here. Yeah. The other one's just a complete uh, TNC uh, and radio. Bam. And it transmits like a half a watt, so the range isn't really great, but um, I put this on an external antenna and it, it seems to do an okay job. Uh, it's not as good as a five watt transmitter, but uh, yeah. um, it's kind of cool. I just got a little Velcro thing that I slap it on with. If I'm in a car that is not mine or something, yeah. it, uh, the battery will run it for, uh, the battery will run it for 48 hours. Oh, that's pretty good. The other thing is, <coughs> if you get the Droid or the iPhone app, just put it in your pocket, set it off transmit, you put it in your pocket, and go for a walk. Yeah, I th you know, that affects the radiation of the antenna, obviously. But, yeah. Um, you know, for backpacks and stuff like this, the little you. thing here, you can, you can throw it in a backpack or, again, um, you can even put a better antenna, you know, one yeah. of those yeah. little uh, yeah. antennas you make yourself for <coughs> little J poles and just yeah. let them dangle. Well, backpacks are good, I mean, in general, if you put them on the outside yeah. or in the top part, yeah. And that's one of the nice things about these. If, if you're going with somebody, uh, if you're hiking like with somebody and, and they're not a ham, well, you're a control operator, so you can just throw that in their backpack and track of them. The, the only thing I can't tell, and I haven't used it enough to know, is if you keep that on, what kind of power it consumes. Because, you, you, you know, on your iPhone or your Droid. Oh, you don't have to have the iPhone on. Huh? It'll, it'll just keep transmitting in the blind. Oh, no, I know. But, it'd be, uh, but it's sucking power from your phone to send the coordinates. No, that's no not that. Both of them are self No, no uh, not yeah. yours. I'm using the if oh, you're using the, the app, app, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it impacts the battery, but the GPS is probably worth uh, at sucking down the battery power than, uh, than the app. I'm sorry to say this, but I answered the door when you came with the tube, and I don't know what it is. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. a packet from a, somebody else's um, TNC, it'll, it'll rebroadcast it. Yeah. And it is fun. It, it's amazing. <coughs> Just driving from here to Sunlight, I told you about that three, four mile, five mile blank spot where there's no cell service. And then if you start going in with, with a radio, not with the app on the iPhone with the radio. It's amazing because you go from direct sunlight from Glenwood, okay, to Dot Cerro as you gain elevation a little bit, to snow mass, and then back to sunlight again. So it shows you all those hops that it does. You ready for the drawing? Okay, Ken, KB0HP. I don't know. N6SUM. 
<laughs> yep, I will. Trish. VW, Ken. MWM doesn't need that stuff. Come over, I'll show you my coffee. In my collection. <laughs> okay, uh, N0 OKL. you put this over there everybody has their own phones out okay yeah. i'll just bring this over there then what i'm done yeah Good. Yeah, we're trying. We're trying to get a little better one. No, no rights next month. We only get one more practice session. <laughs> then paths for the. For, uh, <clears throat> so um, before you leave, next meeting is. Having the potluck on the 21st of May, I believe it is. June is field day. July, we don't do anything. August, we don't do anything. We'll start back That's up in September. Enough. And then in December, we have the holiday event with Bob and Sue. So that's kind of the calendar so far uh, that we have. Yeah. Good. So, same old, same old. Uh, we do a lot of work on the, on the mountains <laughs> top sites. So if anybody would like to help or learn or whatever, um, we, we can always use more people. And, um, we were talking about the summer. If yeah. you look under the accessories. Oh, let me know when you go up. If you never, okay. For Radio uh, Kevin, or me, or whoever, whatever, good enough? <laughs> yeah. We'll just, yeah, if some, and we can, we can put messages out on the website too, if you look at the website. It's typically what we do is, um, anyway, they're usually pretty intense and uh, sometimes I think, Susie, we went up to Anvil Points the last time and 
Ken and Betty and Jim and Susie and I and Dave. And we, we got home and that was when I dropped that stuff off because the highway was closed. We left at six in the morning and we got home 10 at night. So that's the way it goes. But nobody's been up there since then and it's still running. So that was good. <laughs> but if you want to see a site, please do. And um, help if you can. We'll teach you if you're interested in doing it. Uh, um, Oh, Jerry. Well, Jerry, maybe you can get. You talk to him. I want to talk to you about okay. something. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and keep in mind that it's like it's not just techie stuff. It's like the Forest Service. You know. Uh, you know they want us to keep the place clean and you know paint the paint the walls and all that stuff. So somebody wants to do just shovel work or whatever, or you know we kind of need cut yeah, brush to get in. Yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> You know, especially up on sunlight, they yeah. want us to keep it nice and neat and tidy. Yeah. And as you're pulling up, if you've ever been up there, the first, like, the, the second site in is our site. So it's like everybody who goes past there, it's a busy yeah. location, gets to see our, you know, you know, sees our site. And if we have a nice looking thing, it kind of encourages, I think, you know, to show that we're good, good stewards. Yeah, unlike Comcast, whose building is falling. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know about no, that, Eric? It's not a Comcast building anymore. <laughs> yeah. They tried question. to give it away. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of national forests, do we have any sites that are potentially subject to this new fee they want to put in yes. place? Yes. 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 Do? Yeah. Sunlight. Yeah. So hopefully, okay, I didn't know that. Sunlight, what else? They, they reopened, the Snowmass. FCC reopened the comments period on that, from what I understand. Yeah. So it's real important everyone writes in and complains. Or what about uh, Anvil Point? And, and, and to make it easy, uh, you can just cut and paste oil company, the, yeah. okay. what the ARRL wrote. You can, oh, if you do nothing else, you can paste that into your own message and send it in. Yeah. yeah. So if we make out. comments, does it work? Yeah. Just numbers help. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are there points that we ought to address when we make our comments that you might have to Everybody do as they please, but like I said at the last meeting, there, what I read in the EWRL, there are less than 100 uh, amateur clubs that are actually affected by this, of which we hold two of those permits. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, at some point, it may be questionable about snow mass. Okay. Keeping that. Depends on the fees. Is that what you'd say? Or? Well, if it goes through as proposed, it would be $1,400 per year per site. Yeah. We'd be looking at the same. Well, if, if you look at, I, I can't imagine what their personal commitment would be to collect from 100 clubs. <laughs> Probably five people. <laughs> Tough. Anyway. That's really tough. But Kevin, do you think if this goes through for the Forest Service, and I think I asked before, but is our snow mass site really worth the fourteen hundred dollars a year? We'll have to have to address that. Address that. But uh, we put a lot of work in to build that site. Yeah.
I think so. <laughs> I, yeah, I, it have it seems uh, I'd love to see somebody else do it. I got to come someplace in here. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 you know, you got it. Well, well, Bob, you've done. I, I've your done part it, on that. but I'd like somebody Others have been involved to too. to be a, a, a second person to do it because you never know. Is there yeah, any stuck that in traffic. article they had in there about that new ranch that was up there? Yeah. Are they getting a little sensitive about people just showing up up there? Um, I think that's a personal thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Every, everything, I, I can, everything I've read, it sounds like it's between the landowners there. What, the people that are, that are complaining the loudest from what, what I've read. People that are complaining the loudest want to buy that ranch. <laughs> so, if they can make somebody miserable and move out, you know, I, who knows? That's one side of it. The other side is the other people say they've been perfect, you know, they met all the requirements of the county and stuff like that. County doesn't say that's not the truth, so uh, must be someplace in between. <clears throat> well, we're not in danger of. No, I don't think totally so. that has anything to do with us. We're only there for a couple of days out of the year. Yeah, and it's the lady that owns it is, you know, in Carbondale. Her husband was a ham way back when. Okay. Do I take it then that you would? Appreciate some help this year. It'd be nice at least to share the information with one person because, you know, I just, I, I know I do a whole bunch of things and I, I never like talk to anybody about the CW stuff and then Michael send me a message and Phil talk to him on the radio and Christine will say, oh yeah, I'm going to come up this year. And it, it seems like everybody kind of chips does. In. Chips in and yeah, you know, that's, what, that's been my impression. Their thing. It's, all it's, I'm saying is I'll, I'll be happy to give you a hand. Yeah, or, yeah. It hasn't if, been. If there's anything I can do. Yeah, it might be nice to have some antenna work done ahead of time this year. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I seem to remember a prop. <laughs> whatever, whatever, pull it out the box like the Christmas <laughs> lights. Like, do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we were going to need this out. Oh, we got to test that beam and, and the coax this year. <laughs> Mike, are, you a, are you a um, CW person? I don't think so. Okay, well, he's pretty amazing. I'm not sure what the I've been, I, I'm not sure if what? I'm here or not. The uh, 3L beam. Last yeah, uh, we've had suggestions of people, and I don't disagree with this, that we just do a vertical. Which, which, um, do a